past play world guess what we're gonna be making today oh but before we start I'm going to assume that you have uh, knowledge and experience with these basic tools um, we're going to be using wire cutters um, a sewing machine although you can hand sew and a hot glue gun so uh, with that in mind let's start and cut. So we're going to need our supplies of course. First thing you're going to need is your reference art. A poster board, a pen or pencil, some scissors for cutting fabric, plastic canvas also known as cross stitch, stitch mesh uh, a lot of cosplayers are pretty familiar with this. You can get it over by the embroidery floss in any of your craft stores. A sharpie or a permanent marker. Some nylon coated copper wire. Um, you can find this at hardware stores. What I have is 14 gauge. That's probably the easiest to cut and it holds its shape fairly well for lightweight things. To cut the wires of course you're going to need wire cutters. These are smaller pair. I actually use these for a way bigger piece of the wire. Um, you're going to need a large blunt needle. You can also get this where you get the um, plastic canvas because this is the kind that you use for that. heavy cotton thread. This is the extra strong for um, jeans. That's what it says on the label. It's really thick. You can use it for sewing buttons and stuff. I'm going to need a hot glue gun and sticks. A regular sewing needle and whatever color thread you're going to use for your ears. You're going to need the fur or the fabric for your ears or both. Something to drill with. It can be a Dremel, it can be a hand drill, it can be a hot needle, or it can be a push drill. I'm sure you've seen knives use it. You're going to need your headband to mount your ears on. And you're going to need your wig, uh, mostly as a placement guide. You're not actually going to be attaching the ears to the wig. And so now we start. The first thing we do is make our pattern. Of course, you're going to need your ref art for this. Um, I already drew out the flat shape of the ears. This is generally how the ear looks on paper. What you want to do like you don't want a flat ear. You want your ear to look like a real ear since this is going to be on your head. You don't want them just shooting out the sides. So what I'm going to do is take this flat shape and show you how to add onto it to make it look like a, a real ear to give it some dimension. So what you want to do is cut out most of it but not all of it. to mention this because I'm kind of a noob at doing videos but you want to make sure that you draw your ear to the proportion that you intend to wear it um, we are going to add a seam allowance to it later for sewing but right now you don't have to worry about that um, you notice I left this here you can leave more if you want to but you're pretty much going to actually I need to cut off a little more when you get to the highest point on the ear, everything after that you're going to leave. Until you get to the edge. And what I'm going to do here is cut right to the corner and then cut that off. 
so if you look at in, if you have a pet like a cat or a dog if you look at their ear or your own ear really it's kind of it has um like a shape that turns in at the top and that's because your ear is basically a funnel for sound and you want to make your costume ears look like that too for your character because you know they gotta hear they're not just shooting out the side of their head so to make that you're going to take the shape and curl it over and then with your sharpie you're going to kind of improvise or if it's obvious you're going to kind of make that shape and you want to make this curve similar to the curve that you made on the inside of the back part of the ear so we have that and where's my cat? there it is Okay. So now you go around back. And you cut off all the rest of the stuff you don't need. I know I made points on here, but try and make your shapes round when you're cutting them. And there you go. Now you have a three dimensional ear. And it also makes the ear able to support itself better because if it curves in, it's going to be less likely to flop all over the place because you don't want wings, you want ears. So now we have our pattern. And we can put it on the cross stitch mesh to um, cut out what is the support structure for the ear. This is what the fabric is going to go around. It's like the cartilage in your ear. So we're kind of structuring this like a real ear. So you want to use the Sharpie and follow as closely around the shape as you can. Fortunately, I already did this right. So now we have to just cut it out. And we're going to go into fast forward right here. piece cut out. I forgot to mention this before I started cutting, but you don't want to leave any of the line that you traced, or as little of it as possible anyway. Sometimes it's hit or miss with cross-stitch cross mesh. But um, you actually want it to be a lot small, well not a lot smaller, but smaller than the piece of paper that you traced, because the piece of paper that you traced is going to be what you're the size of the fabric that you're putting this in. So you definitely want it to be smaller. If you need to, you can go ahead right now and pause the video and just trim off a little bit. Uh, just to make it smaller, trim off any of the black that you had on there. And the very next thing we're going to do after we cut off our ear is we're going to add the wire frame. The wire frame is going to be not only what supports your ears and makes them perky but you're also going to be able to pose them a little bit and make ear emotions and ear emotions are always fun you can make happy ears and sad ears it makes for fun pictures uh, and once again I have to fight the laws of physics for my wire covers. there we go all right so you can either guess about how much wire you need. Um, I normally need about this much. I've been doing this for a while. So um, you can also take the wire and kind of trace around where you'll be sewing it to. I put a loop here. So it's not the exact loop, but it's better to have too big of a loop than not enough. I 
shape. Okay, here we go. And probably about that much. And we're gonna cut our hour in here. Alright, so we're gonna need probably about that much. Straighten that back out. If you're one of those people who likes to measure stuff or have a measurement to go with, let's grab the old measuring tape and see about how much this is because it's been a while. Yeah. Okay. Let's say round up one and give it 20 inches. All right. That being done. Now we're going to create our shape. Okay, <laughs> I just broke the thread. Um, I wanted to stop right here to give you a little bit of advice. When you're doing hand sewing for anything, I know it may be annoying to work with shorter lengths of thread, but it's a really good idea to only use probably about a two foot stretch. No more than that because, well not a two foot, uh, less than two foot stretch, probably about 20 inches is good. Um, and that's because you're pulling on the thread. Not only does that wear out the thread at the point where it loops around loops through the needle but sometimes at really odd points in the middle and then you get stupid breaks like this if you do get a break you can choose to tie it off and keep going or you can tie it down to the base and just start over again since I'm going to be hot gluing this, I'm just tying it close to where it broke. one of these ears and it took forever it took a lot longer than 30 seconds so um, I did the other ear in advance um, what I'm going to show you now is basically what I was doing in the fast forward and not really explaining but you just hot glue any point where there's a knot on the back of the ear and if any knots happen to show up on the front of the ear you can hot glue it too. Make sure that the hot glue is flush and you can rub the tip of the gun around on the thread so that it lays flat and you can always snip the ends of the thread. When you're done with that make a nice little blob, a flattish blob of hot glue over the edges of the wire. <coughs> on each ear. You also want to make sure that you mirror the ears to each other. You don't want to make the same ear twice because you want them to go on each side of your head.
So we've covered making the pattern for your ear, making the little fold over part so your ear looks realistic and three dimensional, uh, cutting out the base and making the wireframe support. Um, once your hot glue sets, you can make a preview of how your ear is going to look. And so next we're going to cover um, covering your ears with your fabric or fur. So 